Hi, I'm Dr. B, and today we're going to show you how to safely and effectively give an injectable vaccine to your pet. So when you get a vaccine in a single dose, you'll actually have the syringe inside of the package that actually contains your vaccine and your diluent. What you'll oftentimes have is a closed case, and you can just snap those by twisting them. And, but if you have trouble doing that, just pop them down on a table and it'll snap it and you can take it apart. You can push on the needle and bring it out. These are called lure locks and they actually lock your needle in. So just make sure that's tight before you use it. Now selection of a needle, this is a blue needle which tells me that that's a 22 gauge needle. That's the most common one used for vaccinating and it causes the least pain. The tiniest needle we have is a 25 gauge needle. It'll be a light red uh, color. The problem with those tiny needles are you have to push much harder so the vaccine shoots out the end and will actually tear tissue. So most people prefer the 22 gauge needle. Either way, if you're using a tinier needle, you just gotta go much slower when you're injecting so you don't shoot it out the end and tear that tissue. But the idea is that we just plant this gently and just lay it right on the tissue below the skin. So you're just going under the skin to lay it on. When you open these up, make sure your needle's tight. You just pull it off and then it's ready to use. When we're doing injectable vaccines, what we're actually doing is giving them a wimpy strain of the disease to try to stimulate immunity in the animal or the human before we actually see the wild virus or before we see the disease. We have vaccine, we have the sterile diluent, and then we have the powder. That's where the virus is. It keeps it stable till we hydrate it. So when you mix these, you, you, you've made sure your needle is tight. All you do is pull up your liquid, your liquid, and it'll be in the uh, vial that has nothing on it. Then you put it into the powder and inject it in there. Usually it'll suck it out of the syringe. Now I prefer not to shake it. I prefer just to invert it two or three times. It'll go into solution, then pull it back up, and that's what you've got. There's plenty of vaccine in this bottle, so if you lose a little bit, it's, it's not gonna be a problem. There's plenty of virus to stimulate the immune system. There are a couple of sites that we can do this on. One of them is uh, people like to give sub-Q injection under the skin, and most people like to do it right here. But the one problem I warn you on is people will pinch. Yeah, you want to eat everything there, buddy. Um, they, will, they will pinch the skin up. You need to let the animal know where you are, and they'll put the needle in and all the way through and shoot it onto the ground or onto the wall. So what you want to do is tent the skin and go with the tent, so under the skin with the tent. The other site that I commonly do the vaccine on is here in the flank, and I do that more for the Labradors and large breeds that are standing, they're up against me. You just pinch the flank, see he doesn't care as long as he knows where I am. You just go under the skin with the tent, not against the tent, and plant that right underneath the skin, or we're just gonna place it in the tissue under the skin. Should not hurt after we go through the skin, so go through the skin all of a sudden. Don't be going real slow, just go right on in, and he won't think anything of it. Now some people will use an alcohol swab and clean the site. You just want to let that alcohol evaporate for 60 seconds before you go ahead and um, do the vaccine because we don't want alcohol and live virus mixed. Just swab the necks, clean that site with an alcohol swab or you can use a cotton uh, with alcohol and then she's going to tent the skin and give it. So the reason you pinch the skin up in a tent is to let them know where you're at. If you, if you uh, stick them and they get that prick, they'll think something's biting them and they're going to jump. So we want them to know where she's at. That's why she's tenting the skin. And then she's got a three quarter inch needle. She's just taking the air out of the syringe. You can just click it with your finger and then blow it out. There's plenty of vaccine there. So don't hesitate if you've got a drop or two that you lose, it's not going to hurt. So tent the skin, we're going to go with the skin, she's going to go right under the skin and you can see he didn't care as long as he knows that mom's there. Give it the vaccine and she's done. Now I usually like to rub it, I love him up because I, I'm someday going to have to give him another vaccine if it's fun it's there. Now if you have a, a dog that's reluctant, what you can do is hand him a treat, show him the second treat, put it in your pocket and then go at this and he'll be wondering why you didn't get the second treat while you're giving it. 
So don't hesitate. He isn't going to have any problems. Now, Dr. B, I do have a question. Can he give get more than one vaccine or multiple vaccines in a day? Um, yeah, he can. But, you know, we have a five-way vaccine. We actually have four viruses in here with one injection. That's what you want. When you give multiple injections, one over in one place, one in another, you do see more reactions. So we prefer to have a combination vaccine all in one syringe. Now, it's perfectly fine to do the intranasal vaccine and do this one at the same time. Okay. There will be no difference in those two, and they'll both be effective. So the second place to inject them, and I do it a lot with big breeds, is right here in the flank. And there's less nerves here than in the neck, but most people find this easiest. All I'll do to the large breeds is pull them up against me. I let him know where I'm at. I do the needle with the tent, slip it in, give the vaccine, pop back out, and rub it in. And that's all you have to do. So there'll be no less for the wear, but it's easier for me on large breeds that are standing next to me rather than on a table to do that flank area. Let's talk your needles. When you're done injecting, just put it back, insert it back in the hub, unscrew it. You can dispose of this just in a trash can. Needles should be disposed of safely so nobody gets a hold of them. This happens to be a container that is for needle disposal, um, or you can put them into a can, but I prefer you put them in this, or you can ask your pharmacist, bring them in, and they'll dispose of them for you. When you're doing injectable vaccines, Reactions are rare, but they can happen. The most common just being achy all over, much like I am when you give me a flu vaccine. I feel like I'm gonna catch it for three days, and then I'm okay. It's okay for them to be a little achy or sleep a little more. That's not a problem. If you have any questions, call us at Revival. We wanna make sure that they're still drinking, especially, and eating. They can eat a little less, that's all right, but we wanna make sure they're drinking and eating and they are okay. They should come through that in a few days, nothing wrong with that. When you're all done with your vaccination, take your empty bottles, peel your sticker off your vaccine, place it on your health records, and put the date that you vaccinated. We want that to be a permanent record of when you protected it. <music>